Well, good morning, folks. I'm standing next to the newest addition we have in our fleet, and this is the 42-foot Goon Cat. Um, I hope you enjoy sailing this. We look forward to seeing you out in the water and enjoying yourself in this fine vessel. Please remember to take that with you. To undo it, you just rotate the black ring and you twist it anti clockwise and pull it out. But before you disconnect, make sure that your shock valve or your uh, 110 volt switch is off on the, uh, on the panel, which we will cover later. So remember to hold with you. Right, before we step forward, I want to point out the exhaust. This is the exhaust from the diesel heater. Now, if that cable was draped like that, and it went in front of it, it would burn through your shore power cable in a few moments. It also is very unkind to fenders, so if the fender is there, it'll put a hole right along it. And also, port engine, starboard engine is exactly the same. You do have a lock there, which prevents people from opening it. Uh, but we have opened it now, so you just twist it to one side, and, and up she comes. Right, so here we are. This particular cap comes undone with a winch handle and the whole plug lifts off and it gives you access straight onto your steering arm. So that's your emergency steering tiller socket which you must um, you can employ very easily and it's the same on the other side as well. Now over here are the battery switches, um, one for the engine and another one for, for um, paralleling between the two, the domestic and the engine. And this is your negative off. So if you wanted to isolate the boat, you could just switch that off and then you could lock the lids down and nobody could just do the push button start, which allows people to start the boat and they could start the boat and take it away. But by lifting this lid, switching that off, it can't be done. Over here, we've got a start battery. And down here is the oil dipstick. It's just below here. I'll pull it out so you can see it. There it is. And you can see the oil level has got to be between the two dots there. And to put it back, make sure that it is firmly back. Stick that down and make sure the grommet goes into the pipe. While you're down here, you've got a strainer basket that's straining the raw water as it gets sucked up from the pump and circulates through the engine. So if the engine's ever running a little warmer than it should do, you could undo that and check it. The actual seacock to switch off is down here. You can see there's the red handle. Just showing that to you now. It should always be left on, but you can switch it off if you have to look at that basket and, and, and clean it. Over here is your expansion tank from the engine. You can see the pipe going across to it. It's got to be between these two levels. So if you just make sure that that's where they are, you'll be fine. So that's your water, oil, and anti, and your uh, coolant level. Well, here we are at the steering position. We're going to start the engine. We're going to give it a bit of throttle. Push that center button in and engage a little bit of throttle. OK, so we've now engaged the throttle on the port engine. And uh, power, you switch that on. 
and you can see the flash come up and when it lifts like that you can then start it. You just see that little deflection of the rev counter needle and then you're ready to start. So you have your engine hours here, you see that the Firecat has done 197 engine hours, so pretty new. Um, and you can hear the throttle, there we are. And if you want to go into gear, you can bring that up so that it clicks into neutral and then you can just stroke it forward and then you're in gear. Bring it back to neutral, pause for a second and then go stern. And that's that. Now to stop this, never switch the power off. Because if you switch the power off, you won't be able to stop it because the solenoid won't work. So you've got to press stop and hold it down until that's it and then you can let that go now that should switch off and then you can switch off the power one two three off you hold that power down until it goes off approximately three seconds charge charging ports so and we put little bins up here if you want to put your cell phones and things in there that's great and if you've got the type of cell phone that can magnetically attach to that those are fitted as well over here there's a safety element, interesting, it's a self-inflating uh, noodle that can be deployed immediately from this position to anybody that might be unlikely to do it. It can be easy here, you can have an electric wedge and you've got a rack of uh, clutches here and on this one, you have halyards, chip sheets, main, main, main halyards, topping lift and over here are all the reefs. Okay, and you can see that the third reef has been removed we believe that when you need a third reef, you should probably be thinking about dropping the sail. As I said, two speed is there to help you. Now, to operate the anchor windlass, you have to have the engine running. I suggest you start the engine and then you run it up to 1500 RPM, so it's a good amount of charge going into the battery before you use the engine. Um, this will help the batteries a lot so that you don't load them when they're low. Now, down here, this lock chain you actually you actually hook this loop into the chain like that and let it run out so that there is a bridle ahead of you and that means that the chain won't be grinding up against one of the pontoons so that's very important is to use this pick up the dinghy now using the electric winch and we'll just show you how that's done first of all we must roll away all the screens and you've got to be ultra careful when using and lifting and, and, uh, and setting the dinghy back down on the water that it does not bang the, the transom because it will chip. You have the aluminium bottom dinghy, so great care should be taken. So with, with anything to do with the dinghy, you must roll these away and roll them up as neatly and as evenly as you possibly can. And there's very nifty little clips on the other side that they snap into. And that gives you clear access to the dinghy. So from here, we'll undo the dinghy hoist line. There we go. From there, we can go straight up onto this winch. And that's wonderful for picking the, picking up and lowering the dinghy. Now all set, you have electric power, and that will deploy very nicely. On each side of the bow and stern, you've got a dinghy tether line, 
Now the one that's stern is longer than the one up front, so we shouldn't mix those up. But these are vital because when we hoist the DD up, we release the DD lift line a bit until all the strain is taken here, and then you take all the weight off the blocks. So we're going to undo that now. Both tether lines removed, we can now proceed to lower the dinghy. So you open up the clutch and you can feel the tension come on and these are now bearing the full load. So what we're going to do is we just have somebody guiding it while I'm up at the winch um, and we'll gently lower it, lower it and making sure that the bottom of the boat doesn't come into contact with the hull. With the tension off here, we must remember to always release this little this little pelican hook and that now allows it to go away and to, so we'll just slowly um, ease it off so easy does it is it goes into be aware of is that there is a bung in the in the transom of this dinghy and we leave that out when we put the dinghy back, so in heavy rains, it doesn't fill with water and become impossibly heavy. But please remember to put it in before you load the dinghy, or she'll fill it up with water as we've managed to do. So now it's all clear, and we're gonna put the dinghy up onto, into its position, and we'll just ask you again to guide it up there. Okay, so the weight must be now be on the tether lines and the and the dinghy line should, the actual hoisting block should be free. Okay, inside the cockpit locker, you've got two big bilge pump handles. The bilge pumps are out on each quarter. You can see the two bilge pump covers. You also have a stepping fender, which makes boarding onto the vessel nice and easy when you don't have um, stern tying. Over there, you've got the emergency steering tube down there which drops straight onto the quadrant and over here you've got some mop heads that pop in and out on the actual boat hook. You can see the boat hook over there, you just snap them out and put a, 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 a mop head in its place and of course your hose and in the bucket here you've got a whole lot of fittings for the different hoses and some propane bottles for the barbecue. Is the propane locker. We have two 10 pound tanks. We're going to light the stove so we we'll just open that. Please remember that it is always shut when not in use. There's your spare which is completely full. That one is being used and we're going to switch it on now so we can show you how to, how to light the stove. So that's So this is your LPG gas control and as you push the button the light comes on you can hear an audible click. So let's go and light the top of the stove. So to light the stove, you've got the bottle open, you've got the switch on the panel on, you rotate this anti-clockwise and you hold it down and you light it. Now you can see it's lit now, we hold it down for a few seconds so that the thermocouple will carry on for itself. Over here, you've got a pattern, clearly marks, so you know which one you're lighting. And there you are, we're in business there. Press anti-clockwise, twist and hold, and light. And hold that down for a few seconds, and it'll carry on, and it'll remain lit. You also do have a lighter, a lighter, a pizza lighter, so you can actually press that down and hold that, and it has lit by itself. Not 100% reliable, so it's always good to have a manual backup. Okay, ready? Okay, so to unlock, you just move that lever across and up, and then you may undo the door. And then you can slide this out, makes lighting so much easier. And then you can, you can sight through that hole and rotate this to light. You put that on the, on the burner and you light it. You can see it is, it is lit. And you can release after five seconds. And if you want to, to simmer, you can just go to the smaller flame and you can see it's right down or flat out up to the big plane, and there you have it. And then to switch off, all the way up to the 12 o'clock position, and it's off. And then just slide the tray back into place, and then lock the door. And the door is locked. Once salt water in the sink, you can switch it on here, 
with a click and then you can rotate this handle and you can have water at the sink. Switch off, you just switch off manually and give that a push and it will be off. Right, and here we have the instrument panel. Um, everything's fairly straightforward. You've got your cabin lights which have to be on. You've got your fridge, that has to be on but it doesn't switch on the outside fridge. That's got its own power source. And here is the propane control which we've just finished with. So we'll switch that off and then switch off the tank in the cockpit. This is your water pressure and bilge pump. You can listen to that, make sure that it's on and then rotate to the port and make sure both sides are working okay. And here are all your navigation lights, anchor lights, steeping lights. And this is the instrumentation. So we'll switch that on because we'll have a look at that in a moment. Over here is the control panel for the charger and you can see it's float charging. You can actually select, but generally speaking, we don't touch this at all. And you can switch on the inverter if you have to from here, or the charger. So we prefer to have the charger on, that charger on rather, and the charge light should be on. So we'll hold that, charge is on. Let's go back to this panel. Over here we have a selection, your batteries. There's your batteries. You can just press and scroll through. Domestic batteries, 13.3 engine 13.7 and the auxiliary start 13.7 this is your fuel tank range and that's fuel tank one is that it's completely full and fuel tank two is completely full so totally full this is your water, fresh water level here and you can press that and tank one and two are combined <clears throat> so you'll only have one sounding for that so we need to fill the tanks because they're empty and moving across here is the 115 volt AC panel. Straightforward, you can have your hot water on. I prefer to have it off. Your battery charger must always be on to make sure you've got charge coming in. Most important, shore power and battery charger all on. And these are for your plugs, your AC plugs. So very simple little panel. And then over here, a little control unit looks after your solar panels so it tells you how much power you've got coming in how much you're using useful little thing but you don't really need to touch it at all right, to operate the instruments in, in the uh, panel should be switched on and then you can come up here and work with the, uh, the the VHF so you press and hold that down that switches it off to switch it on you press and hold it and it'll light up and on it comes and immediately goes on to 16 and you rotate this to get to all the rest of the regular channels if you, if you want to listen to the weather channel you can just press this weather symbol here Traffic and you've got center. that on and you have volume right there Military remember to switch off just press and hold that down for four seconds there we are and off it go we're in the owner's stateroom and over here you have your s-bar heater control very straightforward, you just rotate it on, switch on the toggle, and it'll fire straight up. And there are other controls in the, um, the two other cabins on board. The sliding door for the stateroom locks that, but it does give you access to the fuses. And over here you have the winch, and you have the anchor. Anchor on the left, winch on the right. If those of us ever trip, they'll go up that way and then you reset them by doing just that. So those two breakers, one for the winch, one for the anchor. You just shut the door and of course the slot across. Turn the owner's head and looking at the shower, please remember whenever you shower you've got to have the pump working. And there's that little black toggle here, I'll press that and you can see it's working. If not, water will flow through into this area. But by having the pump on all the time, it evacuates as soon as water gets in there. And that will run for about 30 seconds and then switch off. And remember folks, when you shower, have that running. Straightforward marine toilet. Um, what you want to do is you want to move from dry bulb to wet bulb. By doing that, twist it half a turn to unlock it. And then pump. And the more pumps you get, the cleaner the toilet. So at least 10 to 12 pumps to evacuate and the water will come in at the same time so it's doing a double job of flushing and evacuating and then when you want to finish off onto the dry bowl 
you cut it off so the toilet is completely dry and then you can lock it by twisting it half a turn. Please use the toilet sitting down because we don't, uh, we can keep it cleaner that way. Here's the fridge, just lift that up, pull it open and you've got a nice useful little fridge. The deep freeze is on this side over here. So just lift that up and you've got a nice freezer section. That automatically clocks in. You've got a, th a temperature control right there, so you can set, set that easily. To undo, just pull that open and let it down. The outside fridge is powered with its own supply. It is not controlled by the main switch. So to open it, make sure that that's all the way over and you can open it. If, if you're gonna leave it not running, you can put that to the vent position and let it close and you can see it's not all the way closed, so it's venting at the moment. And to open, move it across, and now it's a normal fridge opening and closing. Thank you so much for watching our short video presentation. I do hope that this helps you on your trip. We sincerely hope that you have a great trip. If there are any questions that you have pertaining to the operation, You've also got the manual that you can refer to, and you can call me, 1-250-729-5592. Have a great holiday, and thank you for sailing with me now, your chances.